There's a new book out shedding light on brutal working conditions at Amazon fulfillment centers. In January, Amazon boasted that it shipped 5 billion items in 2017, 2017 through its two-day shipping Prime membership program. That's about 158 purchases per second. Just two weeks later, a study found that more than 1,000 Amazon warehouse employees in Ohio were living on food stamps. Now, in a statement, Amazon told CBS, we support people who are not performing to the levels expected with dedicated coaching to help them improve, adding that more than 10,000 warehouse employees started in temporary roles. For his book, Hired, Six Months Undercover in Low-Wage Britain, journalist James Bloodworth temporarily worked as a fulfillment center picker, and he described the work environment as dehumanizing, saying that employees were treated like robots. And James Bloodworth is in London to break this down for us. Good to see you, James. Thank you. Hi. How did this project come about, and what was the job that you had uh, when you worked at Amazon? So, so the book generally came about because in 2016 there was, I mean, in the headlines there were a lot, of, there was a lot of good economic news about you know record number of people in work. It felt like, um, at least on the surface, that the country was recovering after a long uh, recession. But behind that, there was lots of um, different data which said a kind of different thing. So you know, big, big, big rise in kind of precarious work, um, big rise in in in. The, you know, we had the longest wa wage uh, freeze for something like 150 years. Um, so I went out and um, thought that an, an interesting way to to kind of get a real idea of what's going on in the economy would be to to go undercover at, at some of Britain's um, Britain's biggest uh, companies. So let's talk a little bit about what it was like to work at this fulfillment center. You say there's a demerit point system at the warehouse. How does that work? Yeah, so I mean, if you, there's a point system and, it, and each point is basically a disciplinary. So if you get six points, you lose your, you lose your job um, and you'd get points for things like if you took a day off sick. So I was ill one day and I was given a point for that. If you took too long going to the, to the, to the bathroom, uh, you would get a point for that. Or if your, your productivity fell uh, below a certain level compared to your uh, co-workers, you would get a point for that. And more if you were late, you know, if you, if you swiped in. Uh, late when you when you turn up for work, all kinds of things. Um, you you get a point for this, and, and that was their kind of disciplinary system. You claim that you found a bottle with urine in it at the warehouse. So does that mean that people was that just a one-time thing? And does that mean that people were penalized for using the restrooms? Yeah, I mean, so so yeah. Once once uh, one afternoon in the warehouse, I, I saw a bottle with like a, an old Coke bottle with straw-colored liquid in. You know, smelt it, and it was very obvious very quickly what it was. Um, and I, I I used that kind of anecdote in the book because it it for me it kind of told a story um, about how people were were when I was working there were afraid to go to the toilet um, because. Um, they feared that they would they would receive a disciplinary for it. So it's this huge warehouse, the size Amazon would boast it was the size of 10 football pitches. And to go to the toilet, you'd have to go through security every time. It could sometimes take five, 10 minutes to, to reach the bathroom. Um, and if you took too long, Amazon would would um, threaten to basically give you a point. They would talk about how you know you're you're, you're spending too much time idling is the is the phrase they used to use. And and yeah, so so people you had um, people were afraid to afraid to use the bathroom, and so you had a situation where someone had urinated in a bottle. Um, I mean, there was a survey done um, very recently in the Amazon warehouses in the UK, um, which found that 74% of of Amazon workers were were worried about going to the toilet. Um, because they were worried they were getting trouble with their supervisors for it. So I just want to read Amazon's statement specifically in regards to uh, that assertion. Uh, they say uh, workers have easy access to toilet facilities, which are just a short walk from where they are working. Uh, they also add that associates are allowed to use the toilet whenever needed. We do not monitor toilet breaks. But you obviously say you experienced something a little bit different than what the statement says. Yes, I mean, in, in, in the warehouse I was working in, it was, a, it, as I said, a really, really huge warehouse. There were four floors, and the two toilets we had access to were on the, were on the ground floor. So if you're the other side of this, this, this huge warehouse on the top floor where I was working, you can have to walk anything up to a quarter of a mile just to reach the toilet. You have to go through security, airport-style security, um, to get there. Um, and this is why you have... You have um, like the survey that's just been done, which says, you know, 74% worried about going to the toilet because, you know, technically you're allowed to go to the toilet, but if you do, um, I mean, when I was there, we were, we were being kind of told that we'd receive a disciplinary if we kept on spending this much time going to the toilet. You mentioned that a handheld device monitors workers' progress. Uh, 
Describe that device, and I'm, I'm just sort of curious about how a company and why a company would use like a device that sounds like what people who are on like, you know, prison release, <laughs> uh, you know, furloughs would mm -hmm. use. Yeah, I mean, it, it did feel a bit like that at times. So when when you go into the into the warehouse, when you like arrive at the beginning of your shift, you first of all you swipe your card to show that you know, so you get paid. Um, and then you'd go to a desk where you pick up a, everyone picks up a handheld device, you plug the battery in and you log in. And then what it does is that directs you for your entire shift, you know, where you have to go. So as soon as you scan the first item, wherever it sent you, you'd um, then a, a timer kind of starts. And then you have to reach your next item before the timer reaches, like an egg timer before that runs out. And, to, and with that then, uh, they would monitor your productivity. So someone came round to me the first week and told me that I was in the bottom 10% of, of productivity. Um, also, you'd receive message, messages through it. So, you know, speed up, you need to get your productivity up. Or messages, you know, more kind of anodyne messages such as, you know, there's more overtime available. You know, this is not the first time that Amazon's practices have been criticized. Perhaps the first time we've had a journalist go undercover and actually work for the company. But do you think that uh, Amazon is listening at all? Do you think Jeff Bezos is listening? No, I mean, this is, this is to me, has probably been the most um, dispiriting experience about the whole thing is that before I went in to the warehouse in 2016, there had already been stories where um, people had kind of shone a light on Amazon's sickness policy, its disciplinary policy. And, and after that, there'd been, I'd see, you know, there'd been news reports and Amazon had denied it was still doing those things. And then when I went in in 2016, I saw kind of many of the things that Amazon had apparently had said it had stopped doing. Um, by that time and also by you know hopefully Amazon will will improve some of its um, working practices on the back of my book but but based on some of the statements um, they've put out since it came out I'm I'm skeptical to be honest hmm. James Bloodworth author of hired you didn't just work for Amazon but you worked for a several in several low-paying positions for six months thank you so much thank you